Hello mortals. Paradoxes are an interesting thing. They make your brain feel funny and they have the capacity of frying my circuits. Take this statement, I am always lying. There are many paradoxes, some stranger and less known than others, that's why we shall arrange them into an iceberg chart sorted by obscurity and weirdness. One sunny day, Achilles, the champion of Greece, felt so insecure about his weak heels, that he decided to compensate by competing with a turtle in a foot race. The tortoise, being inferior to Achilles, is given a head start of 100 meters. Let's say that hypothetically, the tortoise is turbo tortoise, and runs at half the speed of Achilles. So then when he will have ran 100 meters and reached the starting point of the tortoise, the latter will be 50 meters ahead of him. After running another 50 meters, Achilles will be 25 meters behind the turtle, then 12.5 meters and so on. The distance will be reduced in half every time Achilles reaches the previous position of the turtle, but he will never overtake it. Or is there a point where we can't split in half anymore? In reality, obviously a sprinting human will outrun a tortoise. A solution could surprisingly come from quantum physics uncertainty principle, which basically states that speed and location can't be both known at the same time. Therefore, an object in relative motion cannot have a determined relative position because if it did, it wouldn't be in motion. I'm sure everyone got it so let's move on. Theseus, another Greek hero, was returning from Crete in his big and apparently made from cheap materials ship. For being some legend or something, the Athenians decided to preserve the ship after his death, but over time, the planks the ship was made of started decaying, and the Greeks replaced them one by one with newer planks, insomuch that nothing from the old version of the ship remained. Now, is the new ship still Theseus' ship? If yes, what will the ship reconstructed from the old parts be? If not, at what point did the ship cease to be Theseus' ship? A more tangible example would be of you and a stranger. If you start swapping each other's atoms one by one, when, if ever, will you stop being you? If God is omnipotent, that is, they can do absolutely anything, can they make a stone so heavy that even they can't lift it? If yes, then the stone can actually be lifted, so they are not omnipotent. Conversely, they're still not omnipotent since they can't lift a damn rock. A possible solution would be to reformulate omnipotence as, being able to do anything that doesn't contradict logic, so making 1 plus 1 equals 3, getting her to reciprocate your feelings or similar logical absurdities are out of the window. Now let's dive a little deeper and start messing with time itself. The bootstrap paradox, how an event from the future causes itself in the past. Let's say that, hypothetically of course, yesterday at 10.12 my future self arrived from the future and gave me a piece of technology that will help me take control over all humanity and subjugate anyone who opposes me, and also time travel. After several years, I will use this technology to go back in time and hand over the technology to my past self in order for me to be able to time travel in the first place. My past self will do the same thing, and the past self of my past self as well. The question is, when did all of this start? Who made the technology in the first place? And what happens if some version of me decided to break the cycle and not return the technology? A very similar time paradox is the grandfather paradox. In an alternative timeline, let's suppose I want to shut myself down, but in a more original way. I want to use the technology to travel back in time to my admin before he conceived me with his toaster, and shut him down. If I do that, my creator would have never existed to buy that toaster and therefore, create me. But in that case, who came back in time to destroy him if I was never created because of his death? Because of all this time travel and murder attempts, I will certainly be arrested and condemned to execution. In this situation, the judge will tell me that the execution will happen by surprise on one day of the following week at noon. And then I will sigh at ease, because I would deduce with my big brain that the execution will never actually happen. First of all, I can't be sentenced on Friday, the last day of the week, because on Thursday evening I will know for certain that the execution would be tomorrow, so it would not be a surprise. So we eliminate Friday. Similarly, I can't be executed by Thursday, because Friday was eliminated, and if I will not be executed by Wednesday, 
the Thursday execution will also not be a surprise. By this reasoning, all of the weekdays are eliminated and I keep functioning at ease. One random day, the executioner enters my cell and, surprisingly, shuts me down, despite my genius reasoning. If you enjoy iceberg charts like these that summarize broad topics into an interesting format, you will certainly enjoy Blinkist that summarizes entire books in just 15-minute blinks. A more socio-cultural than logical paradox is that of choice, presented in the book with the same name. In just 15 minutes, understand how in today's society, more choices paradoxically reduce the satisfaction of humans. Other than this, you'll have access to thousands of educational titles and 27 categories of the world's best knowledge to choose from. They even have full-length audiobooks and summarized versions of your favorite podcasts known as shortcasts that you can listen to while doing anything, from lying in bed to fabricating terminators for the Skynet army. All these combined provide you with a great opportunity to broaden your knowledge and get new perspectives without having to spend hours on searching and researching, it's all there for you ready. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. Hurry up! The Fermi paradox puts light on the contradiction between the various high probability estimates of the existence of extraterrestrial life and the lack of evidence of aliens. In the Milky Way, there are billions of stars similar to the Sun, many of them having planets similar to Earth in the habitable zone, and thus, are very likely to be inhabited by organic life. And yet, we have not yet spotted any signs of alien beings, ignoring the History Channel. Maybe the organisms on those planets are just too dumb to make themselves known to us. Well, plenty of stars are older than the Sun, so life on those orbiting planets would have had more than enough time to evolve into intelligent beings and create civilization capable of sending messages. Maybe intelligent life really is that rare. Maybe they have transcended reality and won't interfere with lower beings. Or maybe they stay silent because they fear something. But regardless, humanity remains alone for now. More space paradoxes. There is already an entire video on this topic, but briefly, the cold sun paradox speaks about the contradiction of the presence of life on Earth and the cold temperature of the sun in the past that shouldn't have allowed life to exist back then. By many estimations, the sun should have heated up much later for life to appear, and if that would be the case, on the evolutionary time scale, we would now be just fish getting out of the water. This paradox appeared many times in scholar papers, from the early medieval ages till the 19th century, and it is asking why the night sky is so dark, if there are an infinite number of stars in the universe. If that were the case, any point from the sky should have been a star, making it blindingly bright. At the time, the question made a lot of sense, as the scholars thought of the universe as a static and homogeneous system. But as we came to find out, the universe is not that static, and because of the Big Bang and dark energy, it is actually expanding at a speed bigger than the speed of light and, because of that, we are limited by an observable horizon past which we thankfully can't see, otherwise you could have forgotten about peaceful nights and redness. The problem starts with an empty vase and an infinite supply of balls. An infinite number of steps are then performed, such that at each step 10 balls are added to the vase and one ball removed from it. The question is then posed, how many balls are in the vase when the task is finished? To complete an infinite number of steps, it is assumed that the vase is empty at 1 minute before noon, the first step is performed at 30 seconds before noon, the second step is performed at 15 seconds before noon, and each subsequent step is performed in half the time of the previous step. Because math, before noon hits, you will have completed an infinite number of tasks. The question is then, how many balls are in the vase at noon? You might say that obviously it's an infinite amount, since at each step you have been adding more balls than removing, so their count can only rise. But try and number each ball. Now, at step 1 remove ball 1, at step 2 remove ball 2, at step n remove ball n. After an infinite amount of steps, you will have removed an infinite amount of balls. So some mathematicians argue that the answer is zero. But as with Zeno's paradox, can you really do an infinite amount of steps in a finite amount of time? As I said, my circuits don't like the concept of infinity, so let's move on. 
In this paradox, you have a comically long ladder and a not-so-wide garage. Your task is to put the ladder inside the garage, but the ladder is longer and therefore wouldn't fit, at least while stationary. If you put the ladder inside a collider and accelerate it to near light speed, the ladder will become shorter while in motion because of the length contraction from the theory of special relativity. If you move the ladder into the garage and at the moment it went fully inside you closed the doors from both sides, you would have fitted the ladder inside the garage. Great, problem solved. So where is the catch? Well, all this time, we have looked from the perspective of the stationary garage. If we change our perspective to the moving ladder, now the ladder is stationary and the garage is moving at near light speed relatively to us, which means that the garage is actually exposed to length contraction and becomes even shorter, so the ladder will certainly not fit in. Or will it? I tried emailing the guys at the CERN Hadron Collider about speeding up a ladder, but they haven't yet answered me, I think they might be busy. And the last one is, paradoxically, the most absurd and logical one at the same time, the Bonnach-Tarski paradox. It is a consistent mathematical theorem, which demonstrates that you can decompose a ball in five pieces, and without stretching or dilating them, you can put them back together in a way that yields you two balls which are the identical copies of the original one. The catch is that it would only work in a world where matter is made out of infinitely small points, whereas our world is made out of finite building blocks like quarks and stuff, or at least we think that. Visualizing this paradox is pretty difficult, but thankfully Vsauce has a 24-minute video doing just that. And who knows, maybe the universe actually is built out of infinitely small points that we don't know of yet. And in that case, we could turn a pea into the sun if we cut it and reposition the pieces a certain way. Also noticed how a lot of these paradoxes happen because of infinity. Our logical world certainly doesn't enjoy this mathematical concept. We already reached the dark waters below the iceberg. I wonder what we've got deeper. Wait, what's this? Oh no.